Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Nuclear Waste video series. To be completely honest, we have kind of already solved the nuclear waste problem in the first three videos of this series. Thanks to these earlier videos, we now know what nuclear waste is, we know how much of it we have, we know how much money we have to use to try to get rid of it, we know how to dispose of it safely in geological repositories, and we know how we can chemically separate it through reprocessing to recycle the unfissioned isotopes. So instead of trying to dispose of our waste using one of these other perfectly good methods, let's channel our inner Captain Planet villains and decide to throw all the nuclear waste into the ocean. Ah, this place is beautiful. It just needed my personal touch to give it that special glow. Surely that would transform the oceans into toxic wastelands that are incapable of supporting any life, right? Well, we'll see, and we'll actually calculate what kind of a radiation dose you would get from drinking a glass of ocean water if we dumped all of our nuclear waste into the ocean. We'll do the math and find out. The United States currently has 88,000 metric tons of spent nuclear fuel, which represents approximately 2 times 10 to the 32nd atoms of uranium. This calculation is a little bit on the high conservative end because it assumes that these atoms are purely fuel and that it contains no structural materials such as fuel cladding or spacer grids. Approximately 5% of these uranium atoms have undergone fission, and each fission creates, on average, about two fission products. So that means that we have approximately 2 times 10 to the 31 fission product atoms that we're going to dump into the ocean. Now believe it or not, we don't need to worry about dumping our unfissioned uranium into the ocean, which again is 95% of our spent fuel. This is because the ocean already contains a lot of uranium. In fact, it contains 4.5 billion tons of this stuff. So dumping another 84,000 or so tons of uranium back into the ocean is only going to increase the ocean's uranium concentration by 0.00186%. So, not a big deal at all. Alright, moving on from our uranium to the fission products. So we dump 2 times 10 to the 31 atoms of fission products into the ocean. Does that make our ocean water toxic, vile, and undrinkable? Let's start our calculation with an assumption that is going to make everything much more simple. And essentially, as bad as possible. Spent nuclear fuel is a mixture of radioisotopes with long, short, and medium-length half-lives. From a radiation biology perspective, the long-lived radioisotopes, the guys with billion or trillion year half-lives, are essentially stable. They just don't decay and emit radiation frequently enough to cause much of a dose. On the other end of the spectrum, very short-lived radioisotopes aren't that dangerous either, because they just decay away and become stable really before you can interact with them. Disposing of radioactive material with a one-second half-life is actually really easy. You just let it sit there for a minute and then it's all gone. It'll all decay away in the time it takes to watch a YouTube ad. So for simplicity, let's assume in our calculation that the nuclear waste that we dump is 100% tritium, which is dangerous because it has a medium length half-life, about 12.33 years, and because it is chemically similar to water, which means that our bodies will tend to absorb it and use it for biological processes. Again, assuming that we have pure tritium in our nuclear waste makes our calculations much easier. Calculating the true dose for a mixture of 400 so different radioisotopes produced from different reactors at different powers over the past 50 or 60 years is a complicated calculation. Furthermore, we have established drinking water concentration limits for tritium, so we know how much is dangerous to have in water. Okay. So we put 2 times 10 to the 31 atoms of tritium into a blender, and then just dump it into the ocean. That tritium represents 3.5 times 10 to the 22nd becquerel of radioactivity, which equals about 9.45 times 10 to the 23rd picocuries of activity. Becquerels and picocuries are units of radioactivity that describe how frequently radioisotopes are going to undergo radioactive decay. The oceans contain about 1.33 times 10 to the 21st liters of water, which means that our villainesque plan to dispose of nuclear waste in the ocean has imparted on the ocean about 708 picocuries per liter of radioactivity. 
The EPA's limit for tritium in drinking water is about 20,000 picocuries per liter, and dumping all of our nuclear waste into the ocean would get us approximately 3.5% to this limit. That is not much radioactivity at all. And furthermore, the EPA's drinking water limits are actually pretty conservative. 20,000 picocuries per liter of tritium corresponds to an annual radiation dose of about 1.31 millirem per year, which is about as much radiation as you get every day from naturally occurring radioactivity in the air and in the soil. So how much radiation dose would you get from drinking one cup of this radioactive ocean water? Assuming that the average person drinks just under 3,000 cups of water per year, then you will receive about 0.00016 millirem of dose, which is absolutely nothing. You get about one millirem of dose every day from naturally occurring radioactivity, which means that you'll get about as much radiation dose from drinking the radioactive ocean water as you will by existing for one second on Earth. Now let's talk about bananas. Bananas are slightly radioactive because they contain radioactive potassium-40. The radiation dose that you get from eating a banana is hilariously low. It's so insignificant that most people probably don't even know that bananas are radioactive. To put our ocean water dose into perspective another way, if you ate two and a half bananas per week, then you would get a higher radiation dose from those bananas than you would get from drinking our radioactive ocean water. And this comparison assumes that you're drinking the ocean water full time for all of your water needs. Radiation sickness occurs for doses of around 100,000 millirem, and we have only observed statistically significant increases in cancer rates among populations that receive at least 10,000 millirem of dose. This means that the EPA's 1.31 millirem per year drinking water dose limit for tritium is extremely conservative, which I guess is probably good because we don't want the rivers and oceans to serve as humanity's garbage dump. To belabor this point even more, seawater is actually already naturally radioactive. It contains naturally occurring radioisotopes such as potassium-40, carbon-14, thorium and uranium, and all sorts of other things. Seawater naturally contains about 367 picocurie per liter of radioactivity, which means that dumping all of our high-level nuclear waste into the ocean would only about triple the natural radioactivity of seawater. But tripling a number that is pretty close to zero produces a dose that is also pretty close to zero. I guarantee that a lot of people who are watching this video right now didn't even know that seawater was radioactive. So if you spent 0% of your time worrying about naturally occurring radioactivity in seawater, then three times 0% of your time means that it still isn't a big deal and that maybe we should just dump all of our spent nuclear fuel into the oceans. So to summarize, dumping all of our nuclear waste into the ocean isn't as crazy as it sounds. And to be honest, this actually really surprised me when I did the research to make this video. However, there are other ways of disposing of our nuclear waste in the oceans that are more sophisticated than just using a blender and watching Captain Planet reruns. One option is to bury canisters of nuclear waste at subduction zones between tectonic plates, which is where the Earth's crust gradually gets sucked down into the Earth's mantle. Over time, any nuclear waste that is placed here would gradually get sucked into the Earth's mantle, where it would be dispersed in the enormous volume of magma in the mantle. Finland and Sweden already dispose of low-level nuclear waste by drilling into subduction zones on land, and this method works just fine for them. In many ways, this method is pretty similar to deep borehole disposal, except that it actually relies on the nuclear waste migrating over time to another location, into the Earth's mantle. The volume of the Earth's mantle is about 600 times the volume of the Earth's water, which means that radioactivity from nuclear waste would be undetectable in the Earth's mantle. And by this, I mean it would be literally undetectable. It would be about a factor of three below the standard limit for what we consider to be detectable. This would also eliminate all proliferation concerns. The bad guys aren't going to plan a heist to extract old plutonium from magma, no matter how good of a science fiction movie it would make. The only catch to subduction zone disposal is that you need to make sure that your nuclear waste canister is tough enough to stay intact until the waste travels sufficiently far into the subduction zone. But even if these canisters fail early, this method just reverts into implode at depth, which means disposing of nuclear waste by dispersing it into the ocean, 
which as we just calculated, would also be just completely fine. If you want to be really careful, you could vitrify the waste to really guarantee that it doesn't leak out before going into subduction zones, but I mean, whatever, it doesn't matter, just throw the waste into the ocean. This concludes our video on disposing of nuclear waste in the ocean. I don't know any nuclear engineers who are seriously advocating that we should dispose of our nuclear waste in the ocean, but it would be a surprisingly safe and effective way to dispose of our nuclear waste. In the next video, I will discuss another option for disposing of nuclear waste that absolutely nobody is considering and that nobody should consider, shooting our nuclear waste into space. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and maybe that you learned something.